What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope everybody's doing well today. If you guys are new here, this is Hugh and this is my Waterbox 7225 build. Man, before we start, I'm gonna get some Nori in here for the tanks. The guys are loving this tank so far. They're like swimming all about and so much more room than the Red Sea Reefer 350. But give me a second, let me get some of that Nori in there for you guys to see. If you guys don't have tangs yet or if you guys are researching about tangs they got a special diet they eat algae and things like that so uh, i feed them um, ocean nutrition seaweed it comes in like 50 pack and it kind of lasts forever i'll feed a whole sheet but i'll roll it up like this so they can tear into it and everything but i'm all alone right here holding the camera and the seaweed let me put this down and I'll put this in and then I'll pick up the camera again. All right, there you go. So we roll it up so it's all compact and then they have a chance to come up and um, be all aggressive with the nori right there. That's how they stay super healthy um, if you feed them their, their required diet. So when you're researching about tangs and how to keep them and stuff like that, uh, usually it'll say special diet algae and this is what you feed them the nori this one is the one that's um infused with garlic it smells pretty good <laughs> i had never had a taste myself but you could smell that garlic taste and supposedly the garlic helps them with their immunity and things like that but i don't know they seem to like it so it's a closer shot of the the tangs yeah, they're getting pretty big, especially the the blue tang. If you guys followed along, probably like three years ago now, we got this one as a dime size for one of our buddies. And then he lost all of his tanks and everything. And then this tang ended up back here. She's super huge. But if you look back at the older videos, I'll probably put up on the top right hand corner. It was like tiny like a dime size and like three years later it's that big all of my other tanks I got them from um, Ellis Aquatics out in Compton California they were small as well and um, back then they were like 30 40 bucks each and I picked them up they're getting pretty big and coloring up pretty nicely as well well step back I wanted to do a quick update on the water box 7225 now tank is kind of getting over its um, ugly phase so a couple weeks ago uh, you guys remember I, I got the algae scrubber and I was scrubbing all of that green algae off the glass and what ended up happening was all of that green algae came off the glass but then it got on all of my rocks so for like a week or so all of my rocks were super green with algae on it and my sand has like cyano bacteria um, but the algae is slowly going away um, cyano is also um, less I'm seeing less and less of the cyano but I still have ugly tank syndrome but overall I'm getting less um, algae on the glass and um, algae overall I think just a couple more weeks to go and then we should be all balanced out now with the tank itself I broke down and I got one of these uh, Tom's aqua lifters these things that they used to be like 20 bucks but then um, the company either went out of business or they discontinued making these um, uh, diaphragm pumps which pumps in air and water so instead of 20 bucks they're like 40 50 60 bucks now and I had a couple of episodes with the, the aqua clear here originally I hooked up the airline to the aqua clear and it was work, working out fine sucking out all of the air from this um, chamber right here to maintain the siphon 
but um, two times in a row, something is happening to the aqua clear where the suction isn't as powerful as it was in the beginning. And I noticed that there was a lot of air in here and it was fluctuating my, um, my water flow right here. So when the water fluctuates, my, my sump, my sump, the ATO, it would dump in a whole bunch of water until the emergency, the emergency float would activate and it would stop. In the morning I would wake up and the water would be up to here. Um, that happened twice. I didn't really need to do anything to um, kind of fix the problem. I just like turned off the um, ATO, the auto top off, and I let the water evaporate. It would take like a week or so to get back to normal levels. But after that happened two times, I, I broke down and I, I bought this. Um, and overall it's working fine. I didn't want to pay that 50 or 60 bucks for it. I got it through Amazon, but um, it's working pretty good. So it's keeping the water up to the top um, consistently. So we have it pumping from this hole right here into the pump and then the water's coming back out into the pipe right here and it's going into the sump. So overall with the Tom's aqua lifter, everything's like running consistently, you know. You can hear my ATO go off right there. With the big tank like this and the big um, surface area up top, um, I'm evaporating a lot of water. So when I built the stand, uh, this one I haven't used yet for water changes. I just dumped a whole bunch of stuff in, but then this one over here, I'm using for auto top off. And I'll go through a whole 29 gallon tank within, I think two weeks, it would be all the way to the bottom. But what else? So I got a couple of things to help out with the reef tank and all of that. So historically with all of my reef tanks, I've been adding calc to the ATO to kind of maintain my alkalinity and all of that stuff. It's like the cheapest way to uh, maintain everything um, versus going two part and getting all complicated and everything like that. Um, I would put in two teaspoons of calc per one gallon of water, mix it up and just leave it. In theory, I should have this covered up and not let the air hit it at all. But the calc's been helping out a lot, but it's not um, dialed in or anything like that. It's just throw some calc in the ATO and let it go through the um, through let it go through the tank when the water is evaporating. That's not precise at all, so. I went out and got a couple of things to help me with that. So in theory, I want to stop putting calc into the ATO, have this just be pure RODI water and have a calc stir in the sump or back there. Let me show you what I got over here. So I got this bubble magus um, calc stir right here. It's pretty nice. It was between this and the Avast, um, but I thought this Bubble Magus was more refined. Um, one thing that's different is the lid does not just sit up top. It's um, you could seal it and tighten it down with these um, lock nuts up here. Um, the bulkhead seems like a better design. It's like a square. It's like a square union seal or whatever to seal it up. I think um, AVAS is just a bulkhead. They drill a hole through it. Um, the stir is acrylic. I think AVAS is a, a metal, a metal um, beam or whatever. The the inlet for the RODI is on the outside right here. And AVAS just goes straight through from the top. Um, they were similarly priced, but Avast 
they didn't have any in stock they did have a build it yourself kit in stock but by the time I got to it it was already sold out so I went with the bubble magus for about the same price but I think this is a a better well thought out um, stir than the Avast but um, I got this we're not gonna install it today I wanted to install something else I got this thing off of um, Amazon for only 90 bucks so um, I thought it was a good deal I got two so I'm gonna put one on the water box 7225 and then one on the Red Sea Reef for 350 it's a pH meter but then they also have a doser right here so this pH meter is going to be measuring the pH and I was thinking of using this to kind of monitor my pH and you can set it to trigger this doser if it goes below a certain, certain point I'm going to be setting it at 8 point something and if it goes below 8 it triggers this doser to in theory my plan is to have this doser hooked up to the hooked up to the RODI tank and if it goes below 8 point whatever it'll pull in water from the RODI tank and then put it into the calc stirrer and then that would force water out of the stirrer into the pump um, kind of dosing it with calc water and then maintaining the pH that's my idea on it but first I just want to calibrate the the probe put it in and then we'll monitor our pH for a week or so and then after that we'll try to hook it up with the with the calc stirrer now this thing I don't know I think a lot of people who are into growing weed <laughs> and things like that are into pH meters as well they do have a black one with green lettering and everything but that was like 250 260 dollars and I got this whole thing the meter with the with the doser for only 90 bucks off of Amazon uh, I thought it was a really good deal because this thing is usually 200 like yeah like 200 250 bucks so 90 bucks I thought I'll give it a try but yeah if you guys are interested in getting something like this check out the description down below I'll, I'll leave a link to it but yeah let's get this out and then we'll We'll set everything up and then see where our pH is at. All right, so in the box, they just coupled the doser with the pH monitor. And then, all right, sorry about the lighting, it's reef tank lighting. Or Alexa, turn on peloton light. that's a little better but this is the comes with some calibration solution a suction cup for the probe the monitor probe itself, the tool to adjust your pH, and like power adapters for your like power adapter for your doser and power adapter for the unit itself. So let's get this mounted up on our wall back there all right I got the the unit plugged in to the power and we're supposed to calibrate everything I didn't want to mount this up the wall and then have to calibrate because you gotta uh, use the solution and stick the probe in 
and then they provide you with this tool right here where you're gonna dial it in the, the number seven to seven and then four to four that's after sticking this probe into your solution so you're gonna get this probe stick it into the solution for seven uh, let it let it settle in and then you're gonna dial this into seven and then you're gonna take the pH 4 solution rinse it off a little bit and then stick the probe in there and then you're gonna dial it into four when you see this as four you're gonna dial in the screw but that's the gist of it let me um, calibrate everything and then we'll situate all of this onto the wall again I, I didn't want to mount it and then have to reach in here across my reactors and everything and calibrate it I'm gonna calibrate it here and then we're gonna mount it up okay this is what I'm doing here I'm using the box to hold up the bag right here and I I took the probe out of this um, protective sleeve right here it's keeping it from being dry I think there's a little bit of solution in there it's keeping it from being dry and messing up the probe so I stuck it into the bag then you can see right here it went to 7.4 but we'll give it some time to dial in or whatever so it's 7.4 so 7.3 so what you're supposed to do is take this tool right here and then trim it it's, it's what the instructions are saying I'm gonna turn this until dialed into seven right there you go trim it till you see exactly seven there you go seven so we're gonna do four next all right, the instruction says to use a little bit of the four solution to rinse it, rinse the probe off and then stick it in. I just stuck it in right now and it's right at four so I, I don't need to trim it with the tool. So I think we should be set. We should be set as is. So right here you have a switch to um, trigger the doser if it's go, um, going above it will trigger the doser to put in solution to um, to lower your pH but then if you put the put the switch to below and right here you dial in to where you want your pH to be I'll dial it into like 8 something right here so in theory when my tank is below 8 point whatever right here it will trigger the, the plug right here to turn on the doser and the doser would pull in RODI water from the reservoir and put it into the calc reactor in turn um, pushing out the calc solution in, into the sump I don't know if that makes sense to you guys but this is what this whole unit is going to do for me. Uh, let me know in the comments down below if you ever, if you know, if you know of anyone who's doing something similar. But this is my plan on um, dosing my um, calc to maintain the pH. And in theory, maintaining the pH would um, keep my alkalinity um, stable cool so we'll, we'll get this mounted up right now and then we'll stick it into the tank we'll see where our pH is at I'm very curious to see where where the pH is at so we'll stick it in see where the pH is at and then I'll be mindful and like check the tank at night and throughout the day and kind of monitor where my pH is at for an, an entire week before we set up that calc reactor and um, kind of get everything um, lined up to be automated for a calc.
All right, guys, I got it in. Um, all of my wires becoming a mess down here again. I need to take some time to like tidy this up, clean it up so everything's nice and neat. I mounted the controller up with double-sided tape, kind of easy peasy. And I never knew my tank's pH until now. It's like 7.1 and I know the reef tanks, they like uh, 8.2 or 8.3, somewhere around there. I need to do more research before I start dialing it in. But this is up now. We're going to monitor the pH throughout the week and um, during the daytime, the nighttime to kind of get a baseline of where everything is at. After that is done, after the observations are done, we'll get the calc reactor online and then we'll dial it up to eight point something or we'll slowly walk it up to eight point something and just let it cruise and hopefully we'll get the tank thriving and everything so this is it now i'll clean up everything down here and close up that channel so everything's presentable but yeah the tank the blue lights are on right now i have my reef tank lights turning on and off with the sunlight schedule I'm on solar um, panels and everything so we're gonna take advantage of the solar uh, energy prices out here in California are kind of crazy so I just lined it up with the the sunlight um, time schedule and everything so sun setting right now and blue lights are on for the the reef tank itself everything's kind of like really fluffy and nice but hopefully once we get that um, calc reactor up it's gonna spur on some growth but I'll be sure to update you guys with everything that's going on with the tank itself I'm really excited to get that calc reactor online and share some learnings with you guys but yeah I'll keep you guys posted I hope you guys have a great weekend and I'll catch you guys on the next one.